Welcome to the Massachusetts Gaming Commission's second webinar. Um, and this is a special update with the U.S. Small Business Association Massachusetts District Office. Um, with us today are uh, Robert Nelson, District Director, and Nadine Boone, Assistant District Director for Business Development. Um, we are so pleased that um, you have uh, um, joined us today. Um, these webinars are part of a package intended to support and provide assistance to um, casino and um, horse racing vendors, um, small businesses um, affected by the COVID-19 um, health and economic crisis. Um, we have also engaged small business technical assistance providers, um, Franklin County CDC and the Local Enterprise Assistance Fund, LEAF, um, to provide assistance um, in any way they can. Um, but today, um, the SBA is here to provide information on uh, financing and technical assistance programs and updates regarding um, the CARES Act. And this couldn't have been more timely um, we understand that today um, the president just signed a $500 billion corona uh, relief bill um, targeting small businesses and hospitals. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. But before I introduce our featured speakers, I'd like to turn this over to Commissioner Bruce Stebbins. Um, thank you, Jill. Um, on behalf of the, the Massachusetts Gaming Commission team and my fellow commissioners, I wanna thank everybody for joining us. Uh, to our small business leaders who are listening in, uh, the MGC shares its sympathy as you face so many different challenges at this time. Uh, we know that you remain concerned about your, your employees, your business, and your family. Uh, the commission is happy to host this webinar and others to offer whatever support we can during this crisis um, and, and wish you the best uh, as we all work to get through this. Uh, to our partners and uh, our collaborators at the SBA, uh, thank you for your time to join us today. All of us can appreciate for how busy you all are. Uh, I want to thank the SBA for their assistance to the commission and this goes back to the real formative days of the commission. They have been there, Bob and his team, uh, to support the commission in so many different ways over the years. So uh, we express our thanks for, for that tremendous amount of work you did with us uh, in the early days of the commission. Um, but with that, I will hand it back to Jill and uh, she can introduce our guests. Um, so, um I'm going to turn um, the mic over to um, Bob Nelson, who's our district director um, of our Massachusetts SBA district office. He holds over 25 years of federal experience, um, 20 with SBA, and he has some um, significant experience um, in banking and lending that is too long to describe Right. But stuff is to say he um, has the experience and credibility um, for this um, job. And um, before I turn it over to him, he's, he's going to present um, and give an overview um, with his colleague Nadine Boone, and then we'll have time for questions and answers. I ask that um, at that time, um, you go to the chat function on the bottom of your screen and submit your questions and we'll make sure that they're answered. Um, so without further ado, um, Mr. Nelson. Great, uh, please call me Bob, and, but uh, thank you, Jill, for uh, holding this meeting and uh, Commissioner Stebbins, uh, appreciate the partnership. And as you mentioned, you know, we've been uh, working together for a long, long time and, uh, you know, appreciate what you do to support small businesses in the community. Uh, it's extremely important, but we value uh, what you do uh, to help the SBA and to support SBA in, in small business. So, uh, I'm very pleased that I have uh, Nadine Boone with me uh, today. So Nadine uh, leads our economic development efforts and also our 
business opportunity efforts, uh, government contracting, and our certification program. So uh, what I wanted to do is just to go over some of the stats as far as uh, PPP1, I'll call it, and uh, to talk about economic injury loans and the advanced grants, but then also to touch on uh, the bill that was just signed. And we're all going to be learning more as far as the implementation of that uh, legislation and uh, what's going to happen there. But but let me start by just talking about uh, the PPP-1 that became available uh, through the CARES Act. And what people should know is that in Massachusetts, it really was a Herculean effort. And there were just about 47,000 approvals for $10.3 billion. So I, I really want you to, to think of this. And so this is 47,000 small businesses that are getting capital uh, through our lenders uh, and so that they can meet payroll, to keep employees on the payroll, to bring employees back on the payroll. But the uh, PPP loan also allows them to use 25% of the loan for mortgage interest, for rent payments, for utility payments. But um, the PPP has been a hugely successful program, not only here in Massachusetts, but across the country. Uh, when you look at nationally, uh, there were over uh, 1.6 million approvals uh, for uh, just about the $350 billion, which was in that original CARES Act funding for PPP, and just about 5,000 lenders nationwide participated in that. But if you look at Massachusetts, as far as the lenders that did loans under PPP for Massachusetts small businesses, it's roughly 450 different lenders. Uh, so we had participation from small banks, from community banks, regional banks, large banks. But, but when you look at 450 lenders, many of them are from across the United States that obviously have relationships with our Massachusetts small businesses. And, and uh, they were able to successfully apply uh, for the PPP loan with the SBA on behalf of those small businesses. So uh, with uh, PPP, it's a loan program that is administered and small businesses apply with an SBA lender. Uh, the lender reviews the small businesses payroll calculations. It's intended to be a pretty quick, easy application uh, on the part of the small business and on the part of the lender. Uh, and with the PPP loan program, there are no personal guarantees. There's no collateral required. Uh, SBA does provide the lender with a 100% guarantee in order to give them the incentive uh, to make these loans and to process them for us. And again, I, I just applaud the work on the part of our lenders to get uh, you know, 47,000 approvals for Massachusetts small businesses. And what SBA has advised the banks that they need to do is to, uh, to close and to fund those loans within 10 days of the approval. So, you know, we're now, uh, you know, uh, a little bit more than a week since the PPP ran out of money. And so I know that many of these small businesses have received the money in their accounts uh, and the loans have been closed. They continue to get closed. Uh, and, you know, so this is the bright light at the end of the tunnel where these small businesses are getting cash that they desperately need in order to, uh, you know, this is a short term shot in the arm for eight weeks of payroll costs and, you know, 25% of associated expenses. But um, the long-term disaster recovery is through our Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. So I'd like to share some, uh, some quick data with you on economic injury loans. So unlike the PPP program, where, again, the application is with a lender, um, once the lender reviews the applicant's uh, payroll costs and the documentation to support it, they submit the application to SBA electronically. They get an instantaneous approval from us. And uh, it's assigned a loan number and funds are res reserved against the appropriations. So I, I do know that on the PPP, there are many lenders who had applications in-house that they were not able to submit them successfully to SBA before 
uh, last Thursday at 10 o'clock when the funds ran out. So I know that a lot of lenders are sitting on a lot of applications waiting for the green light with the passage of this new bill uh, so that they can submit those applications to try to help those small businesses so they, they aren't shut out a second time. But with PPP, w one of the, the stats that uh, I know people are interested in is 74% of the loans uh, under the PPP-1 were for loans under 150000 So it really does point to the fact that a lot of small businesses did get money under PPP, and it's uh, expected that you know we're going to continue to help small businesses in smaller small businesses with this new funding uh, that was just uh, signed. But on the economic injury loan, so small businesses up till last Thursday, they were applying at sba.gov slash disaster. And as a result of the CARES Act, a advanced grant of up to $10,000 was made available. So uh, for businesses that applied prior to March 30th, we asked them to go back in under the streamlined method to reapply, to request that advanced grant of up to $10,000. Uh, SBA made the determination that it would calculate it at $1,000 per employee up to the 10,000 max in order to be able to help as many small businesses across the country as possible. So under the advanced grants in Massachusetts, we did uh, 16,500 in round numbers for $76 million. Uh, again, this is grant money that does not have to be repaid. So uh, we did very well when we compared Massachusetts to other states across the country. And so it certainly is a testament to the SBA staff, which I think is the best in the country, but SBA's partners, uh, our lenders, our, our community partners, uh, such as Mass Gaming. And you know, it, it really is, everyone is in this together, trying to help our small businesses to get through this disaster and uh, to recover. So. Under the economic injury loan, even though uh, SBA disabled the uh, application portal last Thursday, SBA has continued to process economic injury loans on a first come first serve basis. So this is direct money uh, from the government. It, again, people are getting things confused and there is so much information out there, uh, you know, mixing PPP with economic injury. Again, you know, it's important to, uh, remember that PPP is applied for with an SBA lender, and we have uh, approved many, many new lenders, not only in Massachusetts, but across the country in order to be able to help as many small uh, businesses as possible. But uh, under the economic injury loan, this is as of uh, April 20th, we had done 509 for $103 million. I know over the last several days, there have been uh, approximately 100 uh, economic injury loans approved per day. SBA has really uh, gotten the technology up to speed so that we can process these things very quickly. I know that we have millions of applications that have been received by SBA. We're trying to work through that backlog as soon as possible. But, you know, so people that have applied who may not have received an answer yet. I, I do know I've received so many emails from folks when they got their advance grants and how happy they were, you know, whether it was a couple thousand bucks or the full $10,000. This is money that businesses absolutely need and, and money through the economic injury loan, the PPP loan program and our economic injury loan. It is flowing to our small businesses, you know, which I'm sure is helping to reduce some of the stress on their part during this incredibly challenging time. Uh, I, I can tell you that, you know, and I, I know my entire staff has been fielding phone calls and emails from small businesses. You know, when the funding ran out last Thursday, we started getting lots of calls from small businesses, uh, some of them absolutely in tears and, and you know, uh, panicked as far as what's going to happen. And, and uh, it really stressed and challenged uh, 
with this current environment as you can expect and as you would ant anticipate. So it, very pleased that we have this new bill that was just signed by the president. So under this new bill, uh, SBA is getting uh, $310 billion for PPP. Of that 310 billion, 60 billion is targeted uh, for smaller credit unions and lenders so that they can work with businesses in the community in order to try to make sure that there's equal access and opportunity. So we need to wait to see what SBA will come out with as far as the rules on implementation of uh, this uh, second bill that was just approved and how it will all be stood up. And I know a lot of people are wondering when will small businesses be able to uh, apply for a PPP with this second round of funding. And uh, Senator Rubio uh, put out a tweet earlier today that a PPP would go live on Monday. Uh, we haven't received guidance from the SBA administrator or the Treasury Secretary. I, I know that uh, the SBA administrator was on a, town, a national town hall that started at two o'clock. I was able to listen to the, about 20 minutes of that call before jumping on this. So I'm not sure whether there were any announcements that she made that I might not be aware of, but uh, you, you need to trust that as soon as we get information, we push it out through our email blast. And I would suggest that everyone who isn't uh, signed up for Massachusetts emailed updates to sign up at uh, sba.gov slash updates. You put in your email address, your zip code. If it's Massachusetts, you're going to start getting our Massachusetts updates. And that's how we're keeping businesses informed with the most current accurate information that we have. But under uh, this most recent bill, in addition to the 310 uh, uh, billion for PPP, uh, SBA also got uh, $50 billion for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program based upon SBA's subsidy model and uh, the, the way that it works. The $50 billion that we got under that actually translates into $350 billion of new economic injury loans possible uh, as a result of that funding. So it, it really is a significant amount of money when you look at the, the uh, 310 billion and then the, the total amount that we're gonna be able to do under uh, economic injury with 350 billion. Uh, and uh, we also got 10 billion for additional funds for the economic injury disaster loan advance. I, I know people are wondering, when uh, sba.gov slash disaster will reopen so that folks can apply for an economic injury loan and to request in advance if they haven't done that yet. And so this is something that we need to find out from the SBA. And as soon as we know more on that, we'll let you know. But the, 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 the one of the big distinctions between economic injury loans and the PPP loan, the application period for PPP only runs through uh, June 30th. The application period for economic injury loans actually goes out to December. So uh, depending on, on uh, how this disaster uh, plays out and when the state reopens and you know people might not know the full extent of their economic injury, what folks would be able to do is, you know, once the portal re reopens, you know, apply for an economic injury loan. If they do have an economic injury loan already, uh, and, but they've continued to suffer economic injury, they'd be able to request an increase to their economic injury loan. But the economic injury uh, loan through SBA is a long-term disaster recovery. So when you uh, put them together, it really is a lifeline in order to help these small businesses to survive and recover. Uh, I'll mention just one other quick thing before I turn it over to Nadine for some uh, for some comments. So under the original CARES Act, uh, SBA was given some money which is called the SBA Debt Relief Program. And under the Debt Relief Program, SBA will be paying six months worth of uh, payments on existing SBA loans. 
and that's our 7A guarantee program, our 504 program, our microloan program. I can tell you that Massachusetts is one of the most productive offices in the entire country in terms of SBA approvals. So the existing small uh, SBA small businesses out there, SBA is going to be paying six months worth of their payments. This is a very significant economic stimulus for Massachusetts and a big benefit for our existing SBA borrowers out there. But under the debt relief program uh, for businesses that apply for new SBA loans, up through a, a date in the middle of September, they would also benefit from the six months worth of payments being made uh, from the SBA. But but let me turn it over to Nadine. Uh, she's on the phone, uh, but uh, Nadine is absolutely one of our stars in the office. And I'm so proud of the work that she does to help with our government contracting efforts and our economic development focus. But Nadine, uh, let me turn it over to you so uh, you can share some comments. Nadine, you there? You there? Nadine, we can't hear you if you're talking. Hey, I was just unmuted, so I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Perfect. Bob, you covered just about everything. I thought I was going to get to cover debt relief, but you covered just about everything. <laughs> What I do want to talk about is the um, SBA assistance for small business. Bob talked about all of the financial pieces there, but leading up to those financial pieces, there's a little preparation that needs to take place. And I want to let you all know that our resource partners are certainly available to assist you in getting prepared for um, applying for the economic injury disaster loans, our idle loans, as well as the Paycheck Protection Program. And our resource partners are SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives, um, the Massachusetts Small Business Development Centers, and the Center, Center for Women in Enterprise, our Women Business Center, which we call CWE, uh, said even while we are going through disaster assistance at a serious pace our access to capital for our 7A loan program is still taking place. So please keep that in mind. Thank God that there has been continuity in government contracting here in the office while we are going through disaster assistance and being able to assist the agencies who are looking for federal government contractors to do immediate disaffecting and cleaning and even those who are federal government certified contractors who are able to help with finding, manufacturing, or shipping PPE, the personal protection equipment. And so surely, um, Mass Gaming Commission, you are a state uh, cert level certification, but over here at the Small Business Administration, we are a federal level certification for our small business owners, and we have our women-owned small businesses, our small disadvantaged business slash 8A business development, our service disabled veteran-owned small business, as well as Hub Zone, H U B Z O N E, for historically underutilized business zones. So we need your vendors and our Massachusetts small businesses to take a look at the address that their businesses are located and find out if they are in a hub zone, historically underutilized business zone. There is a map on the SBA website that you are able to plug the address in to find out if you are. There are some qualifying criteria. It is a SBA certification, so it's a lengthy application process as well as the 8A business development. And then the woman-owned small business is going to have some changes coming up to that. And um, that woman-owned small business program, as of sometime in June, is going to start to be in a third-party certifying process. So if SBA are gonna, is going to certify the woman-owned small business also, just like the Hub Zone and the 8A business development. And 
uh, woman of small business on this day is a self-certification. So when SBA lets us know, SBA Washington, D.C., let us know whether a woman on small business is self-certified or certified by a third party. Everybody is going to create, have to create a new profile. And the current SAM profiles and information in Certify are not going to be transferable to the current platform. So that every woman on small business is going to need to be every certified woman on small business and those that want to certify are going to need to go in and make some changes to their profile. And um, federal government is going to certainly be needing our small businesses. That's what federal government contracting is all about. You know, um, federal government has a target of 24% of all of its dollars going towards small businesses, which comprise of those woman-owned, those small disadvantaged, the service disabled veteran-owned, and the hub zone. So if you fit in some of those categories, you may want to look at federal government contracting also. And um, as Bob said, I can't reiterate it enough, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program is an application through the bank when the Small Business Administration opened that process back up to our bankers. So you have the weekend small business owners to do a little bit of research. Our Economic Injury Disaster Loan is through SBA website. Spend some time online this weekend. Please take a look at the SBA website. Um, subscribe to the SBA website as Bob had recommended at sba.gov forward slash update. Um, take a look at what you may need to supply to SBA. Take a look uh, at, at Treasury's website and take a look at what information you need to get prepared to apply for the PPP loan. These dollars are going to go quickly again, like they did the first time. So we are trying to help our small business owners to know the rules of engagement so that you won't be left out of this process, our most vulnerable small business owners. Um, and some of our smaller vendors. And so um, I do want to reiterate it PPP through the bank, IDA or Economic Injury Disaster Loan is through SBA website. Please do not mail applications to the district office here in Boston. The district office is closed. Even on the SBA website, they do have the address in Fort Worth, Texas. And um, I thought we we're going to get ready to move to questions and answers. And I saw one of the questions that had been provided about what is the best way to get relief. Well, that's what we have been talking to you about through the SBA website or the IDA loan, as well as through your local business bank for the PPP loans. They are some of the best ways. I cannot reiterate enough to please look towards your city and your state for local funding. We're speaking to you from the federal level. So make certain that you are looking towards your city and your state to see what local funding or resources they may have available for you also. And with that, we are going to move to questions unless Bob or Bruce, you have something else you want to add or Jill. Um, we do actually have a question um, uh, prior to the webinar. Someone submitted a question. Um, if uh, someone, if a business has submitted um, an application for a 30-year SBA loan, what's the best way to check on the progress of that loan? So uh, there is an email address, which is uh, disastercustomerservice at sba.gov. Uh, there's also an 800 number. Uh, you can call the customer service center. If it is a relatively recent application, I would 
suggest giving it some time rather than calling the call center and asking for a status update. But uh, if it is an application that has been out there for uh, quite a long time, it, it call the disaster 800 number, uh, request to speak with a tier two representative, and they would be able to look up your application to find out uh, where it is in the process. I, I, I can tell you, and as I mentioned earlier, that there are millions of applications that SBA has. And, you know, so we are uh, processing those on a first come first serve basis, but uh, the call center has ramped up significantly as far as the, you know, the call times. I, I've called the center myself uh, several different times have not had to wait more than a couple minutes in order to get through to a live person requested to speak with a tier two representative. That happened immediately and uh, certainly was able to get some information on behalf of some small businesses that I wanted to find out uh, where their application was uh, in the process. Hey Bob, I have that 800 number here in front of me. Yeah, if you want to share it with folks, definitely. Okay, that um, customer service number for those who may already be is 800 659 2955. Great, thank you. So, I, I just want to reinforce what Nadine was talking about as far as uh, you know, we. We heard from Senator Rubio that you know, this would go live on Monday. We're waiting to find out uh, if that is official from SBA. But uh, for businesses that had an application in with a bank, we're not managing the bank's internal process. Um, as far as their internal queues, SBA does not have any queues for PPP loans. You heard me mention that once the bank has the complete application and they submit it to SBA, it is an instantaneous uh, approval from the SBA with an SBA loan number. Uh, we are directing small businesses to check with the lender that they applied through to find out what the status is. I would be, I would be checking with my lender to make sure that they have no questions on your application, that they verified things, and that uh, your application is ready to go as soon as SBA gives the green light so that they can uh, submit the application to SBA to get the approval. Again, we do think that funds will go uh, pretty quickly. I know that there are lenders out there that have thousands of loans uh, that have not been submitted to the SBA that are in their own internal queues. And, you know, so again, I would be taking this time to, to make sure if you have applied with a lender that they don't have any questions, that it's in their process and ready to go. But the way it works with SBA on uh, PPP, uh, if a small business is unhappy with the service that they've been getting from a lender, they want to apply with a new lender. If that new lender submits the application before the first lender that the small business was working with, that second lender would get the approval. Uh, there can be only one approval per applicant. So, uh, you know, if again, if that lender uh, did not submit the application uh, and they're not providing, you know, answers to your questions, certainly you can talk with uh, a different lender and see whether they'll entertain your PPP application. Uh, I, I do know that we have a number of, of small community banks. And as you heard me mention, there is a carve out uh, under the 310 billion for smaller institutions so that they can help smaller small businesses. And we need to find out how that's going to work. But uh, I, I believe there might be a dozen different uh, fintech companies, national uh, companies that are processing PPP loans. So if you don't have a bank that uh, you uh, are working with and you're unsure where to go, that you could explore an online application. It's, you know, some of the names are uh, into it. PayPal, Cabbage, Veeam, uh, you know, there, there are a number of these. And, and so that's a, another possibility for you in order to get a PPP application in. So, uh, so Jill, not sure if there are other questions. 
Um, there are a couple more questions that came in ahead of time. I just wanted, and, and I'm going to um, give you two that are about the timing that you may have covered. Um, um, how long does the PPP um, loan process take, um, the application process approval? And also, um, the business um, indicates they've submitted an economic injury disaster loan um, uh, several weeks to a month ago and haven't heard anything. So it sounds like yeah, you may so, have covered that. Yeah, so again, on the PPP, uh, you know, uh, the small business applies with the lender. Uh, it's, it's basically covering uh, eight weeks uh, worth of payroll and you know, mortgage interest and rent payments, utility payments can be 25% of the loan, but the small business is calculating what their average monthly uh, payroll has been. Uh, you multiply it by two and a half times, that's the loan amount. Uh, and uh, so it really is a very streamlined process as far as the SBA approval. Uh, so it's an instantaneous approval from the SBA once it is uh, a completed application is submitted to us and then the bank needs to fund and disperse that loan within 10 days. On economic injury loans, uh, we had always been sharing guidance that it could be up to 21 days for a decision by the SBA. I know in the beginning, because Massachusetts was one of the first states with a uh, full state declaration, that we were getting approvals uh, much quicker than uh, the 21 days, but you know it's the entire country that came online uh, with declarations after Massachusetts did. Uh, I know that there are folks that have had applications out there. You know, it's uh, bumping up to the 21 days to the month. Uh, you heard me mention that uh, SBA has enhanced uh, and streamlined its approval process on those loans. And uh, I've been seeing, again, uh, approvals anywhere from 75 to 100 uh, economic injury loans approved on a daily basis. So for folks who are waiting for uh, decisions on their economic injury loans, I think within uh, the coming week, you're going to continue to see uh, significant levels of EIDL loan approvals. And uh, I know that uh, idle advances are, are still going out to people. Uh, but folks need to, you know, uh, remember and just be aware of the very, very significant volumes that SBA has received. Um, May I add to that, Bob? Please, absolutely. Thank you. So as Bob was talking about paycheck protection, um, please keep in mind that, that um, those funds are going to be, someone asked how long is it going to be processing, uh, 10 days after the loan is approved. Um, that money is supposed to be used within eight weeks of your disbursement date, Bob. Is that correct? Not the loan approval date, but disbursement date? Yeah, so the eight-week uh, clock starts ticking uh, at the time of initial disbursement. And uh, what the, the big thing why uh, the PPP is so attractive, it has the potential to be 100% forgiven. And uh, so I can't stress that it's to bring employees back on that the business may have furloughed or let go uh, for businesses that have not done that, you know, they use the PPP funds in order to maintain their payroll. Uh, and, you know, so this is potentially a grant uh, with a 100% forgivable feature. The, what the business needs to do uh, and its full-time headcount, I know we're waiting for more detailed guidance on the forgivable features of it, but the target is to get your employee levels back, your full-time headcount, back uh, as of June 30th. And it, so different questions that come up uh, doesn't have to be the same employees. Uh, say the employee doesn't want to come back to work. It doesn't have to be the same employee. You can uh, you know, bring on new employees. Uh, you could actually pay them more as an incentive uh, to get them to come back and to, uh, to work with you. Uh, other questions that come up is you're not an essential business. The business is not technically open right now. Uh, what is the employer to do with these employees. 
it, you know, there's nothing in the law that says that the employee has to be doing any work. What SBA through the PPP is we want them off of unemployment, on the business's payroll, so that when we get the all clear, that businesses can uh, get back to work and, and open. You know, they're not basically a startup, uh, you know, looking to, you know, find a workforce. Uh, and so this program is intended so that when we do get the all clear, you know, they'll have their employees and they can get back to doing uh, what they uh, ordinarily do as far as running their small businesses and and uh, helping uh, to support communities. So Nadine, I'm not sure whether I, I, I spoke too much, and, but certainly uh, add, add your comments to that. But uh. I just want to say to the small business owners to make sure whatever that you are applying for, that you keep all of your documentation very, very clean because we are talking about a forgivable portion of the, you know, that the PPP could be a 100% forgivable loan um, for your employees, up to $10 million, at least that was the first round. We don't know what the second round is gonna look like. And that's for each employee up to $100,000 um, annually with uh, this loan is a 1% interest rate with a two year maturity. So make sure your paperwork is really, really clean so that you are not incurring additional debt and that this becomes a forgivable grant product for you if you are going to go this direction with your bank. And on the economic injury disaster loan, for the small business owners, the interest rate is 3.75% and you get up to 30 years to pay that loan amount off. So as Bob had indicated, the PPP program that is a short-term loan. You know, we're talking about eight weeks, and the economic injury disaster loan is a 30-year loan program. Economic injury disaster loan does not close. Application process does not close until the 30th of December, 16th of December, um, 2020. The PPP uh, process closes on June 30th, 2020. So you need to prioritize and um, get your ducks in a row again look at treasury's website and the disaster assistance look at sba's website and uh disaster assistance i mentioned resource partners that's local assistance which is score cwe uh msbdc they are here to help you we are here to help you so that's about all i have bob Okay, great. So one thing I, I know that uh, Rob Williams from Mass Growth Capital is on. Uh, so uh, hi, Rob, and uh, certainly appreciate what uh, the folks at MGCC are doing. So we really do want to make sure that uh, all communities know about the programs and how to access them. So uh, with uh, the help of MGCC, they've actually translated the PPP application into 19 different languages. The SBA application has to be in English, but uh, for folks that are more comfortable uh, in a uh, language other than English, they uh, can look at the application in 19 different languages, and then uh, you know they'd be able to uh, put the information onto the English application. But it's it's just an effort on the part of MGCC in order to make sure that uh, you know all communities know about these programs and how to access them. So. Uh, we uh, appreciate the, the work of uh, Larry and his team over at MGC. Um, I, I have uh, one more question regarding um, the new round of the CARES Act. Um, what will Massachusetts portion of round two be? And um, if, a, if a business has submitted an application already, do they need to do anything else? Right, so uh, with the federal government, there is no state specific allocation. And I always look at it as my job and my responsibility to try to get as many federal dollars as possible into the Massachusetts economy. And so this is why, you know, with, with my team, you know, we've been doing a lot of Zoom calls and webinars and other meetings, you know, making sure that people know about this. And I think the numbers that we've been able to 
uh, helped to deliver is a testament to all of the outreach and marketing that we've done on these programs to make sure that people know. But, uh, but I dovetailing back to you know my previous comment regarding you know all communities, and I know that we've uh, done events in uh, in for the Chinese community, for the Latino community, for um, the Black community, it, and we really want to make sure that everyone knows about all the different. Uh, programs and how to access them, uh, it's really important to us. But uh, on PPP, again, if a business applied with a lender and the lender did not get the application through, the small business should be talking to that lender and making sure that that lender is comfortable with the application and that it's good to go uh, as soon as SBA gives the green light. You know, so the application between the small business and the lender, that's between them. The lender applies for the guarantee uh, with the SBA through our electronic process. And so as Nadine mentioned, you know, uh, PPP, this is not a paper application uh, and applications should not be mailed to the district office. The business should be working with lenders on the application. If a small business has never applied for a PPP, they can work with any lender. Uh, SBA does not have restrictions that there has to be a depository relationship or a borrowing re uh, relationship. Different lenders are managing their internal processes uh, the way that they determine is best for them and their institutions. SBA is not dictating what they need to do, but small businesses, you need to be comfortable with your lender that your application is in good hands and that they're going to be submitting it as soon as we have the okay because we don't want uh, anyone to be left out. And But again, um, there is a provision in the funding that uh, for smaller credit unions, smaller financial institutions, in order to try to help smaller small businesses with access. And as, as soon as we know the rules on that, uh, we will we'll be publishing that and getting that out to the community. Great, thank you, Bob. I just um, put a message out, um, last call for questions. Um, does, if anyone wants to submit a question through the chat feature. So Jill, if I could mention one thing, so just as a follow up, someone might think of a question you know, later tonight or over the weekend. Uh, the Massachusetts District Office mailbox is where we're suggesting uh, questions to come into. We're responding to those on a daily basis. So that email is Massachusetts DO at SBA.gov. The DO stands for district office. But if you do have an urgent question and an urgent need, certainly reach out to myself directly through my cell phone number or through my email. But uh, emailing Nadine, you know, anyone on my staff, you know, we're working, uh, you know, uh, overtime, long hours, and we're here to try to help you as best as we can uh, the, the best information that we have available. Okay, and I noticed, um, and thank you very much for that, um, uh, John Fitzpatrick from the Massachusetts Supplier Diversity Office has raised his hand. Um, you want to take yourself off mute or submit a chat? Just very quickly, I didn't mean to interrupt. Thank you, Bob, thank you, Nadine. Um, and thank you, Jill. I just wanted to, to say there was no formal press release, but um, Rob Williams, formerly of Mass Growth Capital, he was just hired with the SDO as our new director of diversity and small business outreach. And um, he's a great addition and we're very excited to have him with us. Wow, uh, congratulations, uh, Rob. And uh, uh, yeah, a good addition uh, to the, the team over there at the SDO. So uh, great news. That's fantastic news, thank you. Um, well, um, it looks like um, there are no more questions. I just wanted, uh, if, unless you have some wrap up comments, are you? Okay. Um, I just wanted to um, take a moment to thank those uh, folks who helped to put this together. Um, we, we mentioned Commissioner Stebbins, um, but Crystal Howard, Tanya Perez, 
on my team and Sharon Bedard um, and our communications team. So I'd like to give them a shout out and thanks. Um, and, and thanks to um, both Nadine and, and Bob, you have provided us with such great information, hot off the press and, and um, with your experience working with these small businesses through these weeks. So we really thank you for that. Yep, I can't wait until we can get together in person again. And, uh, and uh, this disaster is behind us. So I'll, I'll keep praying and, and keeping my fingers crossed. So, but uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Stebbins and, and Jill, and uh, let us know if we can help with anything. But uh, uh, we're, my team, we're certainly glad to be a service to the small business community. Great, Thanks, thank Bob you. And Thanks, Bob and Nadine, for your great work and everybody for participating. Okay. Um, thank you.